All right, everybody, Fabio back here once again. And I want to welcome you to part 17 of my vinyl collection. Like I said, we are going to try to wrap this up. We are going to try to get this done. And uh, we're just going to jump into it. So let's do this thing. So first up, we have a bootleg of Paul Stanley's solo album, Live to Win. Because it still has not gotten any type of vinyl release and this is on gold vinyl i did not mean to like half flip you guys off i apologize but i do like that album there's some good stuff on there and then next or then we also have uh the king of new york bootleg which is from that tour the live to win tour and this was recorded at irving plaza october 28th 2006 and this is on black vinyl. I think there's a purple release out there. I just couldn't find it. And next up, we have a bunch of records from Permatia Forneria Marconi, which is PFM. They are, Ital they are an Italian prog rock group that my uncle got me into. So we have photos of ghosts. And then we have The World Became the World. And I got both of these out in California when I was out there. Uh, actually, this one as well. This is called Cook. So I found these. The other ones that I have are with the ones that my uncle got me before he passed away. And then I only have a couple Pantera records. I just, again, I don't have much here. But we have Live at the Dynamo Open Air Festival 1998 which this was recorded um, it doesn't say the date it just says 1998 so yeah sorry <laughs> and then we have a couple Pantera compilations we have a decade of domination 1990 through 2000 this is the black ice colored vinyl from Walmart and then we also have a History of Hostility. There is a purple pressing of this that I don't have. And these two are pretty much the same. I think this one was always a Walmart exclusive, even when it was on CD. Um, the, the track order is a little bit different. And then um, Psycho Holiday is on this one, but it's not on this one. And this love is on this one, but not on this one. Other than that, everything is the same. And then we have uh, some Pat Denizio stuff. Pat was the lead singer of the Smithereens, which we will cover them in a later part. Uh, I did get a chance to meet him, and he was just one of the nicest celebrities that I ever met. And I miss him a lot. So we have uh, his first debut or his first solo album. I can't talk. Debut solo album. Songs and Sounds. And then we have This Is Pat Denizio. And I think those are the only ones that got vinyl releases. I think I have everything that he put out on vinyl. Um and next up, we got a bunch of Pat Travers. Pat Travers is definitely one of the most underrated guitar players, at least in my opinion. Um, he will just never get the credit that he deserves. That's just me. So we have his self-titled debut. And then we have Making Magic. Uh, putting It Straight. Uh, Heat in the Street, which this is when it changed to the Pat Travers Band, but it's all the same. And then we have Crash and Burn. Radioactive. Hot Shot. Uh, Black Pearl. This one's kind of like half out of the sleeve, which is why I'm fixing them as we go along because I like the way that they're supposed to be. Everyone does it different, but the way that it's supposed to be, they're supposed to be top loaded. The record is supposed to go in this way. Um, when you put them in the side, then it gets all fucked up and half the sleeve comes off. So as we are, uh, as I'm doing these videos, I'm kind of putting them back the way they're supposed to be because they all got fucked up. Anyway, 
Then we have the live album, Go For What You Know, which is a fantastic live album. And then we have Boom Boom, the best of Pat Travers. Which is all, that's all the Pat Travers stuff we have. And then uh, we've got Paul Diano. This is all the, I just put all the solo Paul Diano stuff together, which isn't much. It's only a couple records that I have here. But we have Paul Diano's Battle Zone with Fighting Back, which of course he was the original singer in Iron Maiden. And he's always uh, putting stuff out, putting out music. And then we have Tales from the Beast, which is on Red Vinyl which is just a compilation of Iron Maiden songs that, you know, he performed on and he just did new versions of, which is cool. And then we end this box shelf cube thing with not one, not two, but three copies of Pearl Jam's 10 because I'm a doofus. Uh, oh, well. So first up, I think I have these out of order. I do have these out of order because this is an official copy. This is the 2007 European release. The guy said it was the original pressing. Clearly it's not. And then we need to flip these. And then this is the 2017 uh, purple pressing from Target. And then this one is a bootleg. This is, uh, yeah, this is a bootleg. This is the red pressing. So, yeah. And then, when we move over to the other shelf, I do have the uh, 10 redo version that they did where they, and this is really cool. They remixed the entire album. That's the first record. And then, um, well, no, the, the, I'm sorry. The first record is a remaster of the, the original album. And then the second record is they kind of went in and redid it. And they added stuff to it and, and changed some things and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, this is cool. I didn't, forgot that it came with this. But, yeah, it's the... The first record is just a, the, the remastered version of the original album. And then the second record, they went in, they remixed things, they changed things, and it's on uh, Coke Bottle Green Vinyl. I think this was an exclusive to Newberry Comics, which is weird because the place is called Newberry Comics, but they're known for selling records. I, I don't know how that works out, but it does. And then we got to start a new pile because we're in a new cube. And then... We have Versus, which this is an original pressing. This is an original 1993 uh, pressing of the album, which I love that album. And I also love this album. This is the original 1994 pressing of Vitology, which Pearl Jam had it in their contract where it came out on vinyl before it came out on CD, which is really cool. But another great album. Again, the first like four Pearl Jam albums I think are the best. And then from there, like, grunge was over. So, you know, it is what it is. And I'm not saying that the stuff they did later wasn't good because they're always putting out good music. Um, it's just I think those first four albums was the best that they did. And I do not subscribe to their politics. I do not subscribe to their opinions. So, you know, same with Rage Against the Machine. I don't, you know, even though a lot of those songs are written about that, Music is subjective. It can mean whatever you want it to mean, and I don't subscribe to their theories because that's how it works. Anyway, moving on. Then we have the Record Store Day exclusive. I think this was 2019, yes, of the MTV Unplugged performance, which this was the first time that this was released officially. There is a non-Record Store Day version out there, but that's the one I wanted. And then we have... Another Record Store Day title, I believe this was from last year. Uh, actually, it was from earlier this year. This is the Live on Two Legs album uh, on clear vinyl. It's the first time it's been on vinyl in 20 years. So, very cool. And then we have... I think I had these on CD at one point. And they're... they're they did put this out on vinyl back when it originally came out, but they're really fucking expensive. But Walmart reissued uh, Rearview Mirror uh, 
Pearl Jam's Greatest Hits 1991 through 2003, and they split it into two volumes of two records each. So we have volume one, which is black and white vinyl. And this had some uh, Once Alive and Jeremy. I think they re-recorded some of the stuff for it. And then it has some, I think there might be a couple new songs on here. And then volume two is black and gray vinyl. Which I think uh, black and a couple other songs they re-recorded with Matt Cameron, who has been in Pearl Jam forever now. But he was not the original drummer. And then we have a bootleg of the MTV Unplugged performance, and this is on red vinyl, and this is the complete show because the official release is not the complete show. So there you go. Well, it's the broadcast version, so there you go. Anyway, moving on. And then, of course, you got to have Frampton Comes Alive. And then we have Peter Gabriel with So. I was going to say so, but I'm like, well, let me, uh, well, it's on the fucking back. I'm a moron anyway, but a classic album. Love Peter Gabriel. Cannot go wrong with his work. And then we got Pink Floyd. We've got Metal. Great album. What, what more could you say about Pink Floyd? And again, Roger Waters is more known for doing this, not singing. And to be honest, I never really liked Roger Waters. I'm a David Gilmore guy. Um, of course, you know, David Gilmore does put some of his views and stuff out there, but it's not in your face. Uh, Roger Waters, I just can't stand that. And outside of Pink Floyd, I never cared for him as a musician. I don't care. It's the truth. But you got to have Dark Side of the Moon, at least one copy of Dark Side of the Moon on vinyl. Um, I think I have two copies, but for now... And then we have the follow-up, Wish You Were Here. But Pink Floyd's fucking awesome, so. And then we have Animals, another great album. And then, of course, we have The Wall. So there you go. I mean, um, Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, and The Wall is just a great run of albums. And then we have, uh, speaking of No Roger Waters, we have A Momentary Lapse of Reason, which I really enjoyed this album. Learn to Fly, or excuse me, Learning to Fly, is one of my absolute all-time top five favorite Pink Floyd songs. Um, it might even be my favorite, I'm not sure. Because I'm not going to say that Wish You Were Here is my favorite. I'm not going to say that Time is my favorite. Maybe Have a Cigar. Maybe Have a Cigar is my favorite. Because everybody else says that those songs are their favorites. So there we go. And then I do have some Pink Floyd bootlegs here. Uh, first up, we have A Dark Side of the Moon Live, which this was recorded at uh, Wembley in London, November 16th, 1974. So it has the entire Dark Side of the Moon album, and then Echoes is the encore, which was very typical when they did the Dark Side of the Moon tour. Because that's what everybody wanted to hear, was the whole album. And that is Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, like Led Zeppelin, is one of those bands where you want to hear the whole album. You just don't want to hear the hits. Then we have Live in New York City, 1977. Uh, does not say where it was recorded, but it is the entire Wish You Were Here album. So, that's what again, that's what people want to hear. And then we have... Pink Floyd United, this is when they did the reunion for Live 8 in 2005, which had, the at the time, the four surviving members. Now there's only three surviving members of Pink Floyd. Um, and this is on red vinyl. And again, sorry for the half flip off there. I am not meaning to do that, guys. I'm not flipping you off. It's not intentional. I apologize. And then we have Wish Animals Were Here, the studio outtakes. So this is all just stuff that never made it to the albums, different versions of the songs on here, but you know, still very cool to have. And I believe these are on good old black vinyl. And then that's all for Pink Floyd. Next up we have Poison, which of course, you know, they ate shit slept and breathed the hair metal stuff but they're still a good band doesn't matter what anyone says but we have look what the cat dragged in 
original pressing. And they were great on the stadium tour. Um, they were one of the main reasons why I went was them and Def Leppard. And well, the reasons why I went was all the other bands. Um, you know, I never saw Def Leppard. Poison, it's not like Poison tours a lot. You know, Brett Michaels is always doing his thing, but you know, I went to see the other three bands, you know, so there you go. And then we have Open Up and Say Ah, which this is the censored cover because the tongue was too long, so they just cropped the, the picture there. I will get the original cover at some point here, but for now, that's good enough. Because, you know, people don't like tongues, apparently. But now, see, it's weird. Back in the 80s, you couldn't do tongues, but now everybody wants to fucking eat ass. So, I don't know. We live in strange times. Anyway, moving on, we have Flesh and Blood, which this is the original pressing. They did a, I think it was Record Store Day last year or 2020. They did a reissue of this, and apparently it was fucking terrible. Like, the mastering and stuff was awful to the point where people were returning all of their copies. So... I don't have that pressing, I couldn't tell you, but that's the word on the street. That's the rumor, buddy. And then, the last Poison record that we have is Greatest Hits 1986-96, through 96, which is on yellow and green neon vinyl. This is a Walmart exclusive. Was really, really happy when this came out. Because I was like, oh, cool. Next up, another one of my favorite bands, a band that I absolutely love, The Police. I have always been a huge fan of The Police ever since I was a kid. I just always thought they were really cool. First of all, their name was The Police. Like, they just went very simple with it. And second of all, Sting is a great singer. Um, just that, you know, pop, you know, pop rock with a little bit of punk in there. Um, I love those type of bands. I think Cheap Trick, which where, right where my hand is, is Cheap Trick. I think Cheap Trick and The Cars, which are next to each other, I think they had that too, especially in the early albums. And I just love that combination of just power pop, radio-friendly rock and roll, but it's got a little bit of an edge to it, and you don't get that anymore. And back in the 70s and the 80s, you got it all the time. Now, not so much. But I love The Police. So first up, we have... Outlandos de Amor, which is their debut album. And then we have Regatta de Blanc, something of white. I don't know what Regatta means, but and I'm sure I'm butchering the names. And then we have Zenyatta Mondata. I mean, again, these are just amazing album titles. I mean, come on now. <laughs> and then we have they went simple with this one, Ghost in the Machine, which has Demolition Man, which Demolition Man might actually be my favorite police song. And then we have Synchronicity, which is another classic. I mean, just, again, from start to finish, I mean, I would argue that, from especially the B-side, the B-side has every breath you take, King of Pain wrapped around your finger, and tea in the Sahara. So the entire B-side was it was all hits, which is cool. And then this one, we might be able to do it. If you hold it up to the light, you can kind of see it. Yeah, it does have like a purple translucent to it, but you have to like hold it up to the light like that, which is cool. And then we have, uh, this was a record store, actually... It's a double set, but it's a Record Store Day title from last year, which was their live album split into two uh, volumes here. So we have The Police Live Volume 1, Boston 1979 on blue vinyl, which was the first disc of the album. And then we have Volume 2, Atlanta 1983 on red vinyl, which this was the second disc of the album, of the CD, that is, so... Yeah, but that's awesome. Unfortunately, I don't have any police bootlegs right now. There's plenty out there. Um, and they're a band that, like, every 20 years they get back together. So maybe in a couple of years here, you know, they'll do something. You know, we'll see. When did, uh, I think, the 40th anniversary of the first album already passed? I think the first album was 1980. So... 
actually 1979. So I don't know. Maybe in a couple years here we'll get another uh, police reunion, and hopefully they'll come here and I'll be able to go see them. I'm sure the tickets will be expensive, but it's the fucking police. It'll be worth it. And then to to top it off, we have every breath you take the singles which my parents had this on CD back in the day, and I used to listen to the ever-living fuck out of this album. So, And there was a vinyl release. Um, I got this sealed for like 30 bucks, but I didn't care. I just wanted it because, again, I had it on CD. Next up, we have the Power Station, 33 and a third, which uh, Power Station was a 80s super group because it had Robert Palmer... Um, it had Tony Thompson from the Thompson Twins. It had John Taylor, Andy Taylor. And yeah, uh, they were like a super group before that was a thing. And of course, they did the song from Commando, We Fight for Love, which is not on any... The only release it's on on vinyl is if you get the Commando soundtrack. But it was never put out on one of their releases. And then next up, we have another great band, The Pretenders. This is their self-titled debut which has my favorite song that they did. Uh, well, I don't know. Um, it's tough for me. Either Brass in Pocket or Back on the Chain Gang. So there we go. But Space Invaders is a great song too. And then we have Learning to Crawl, which has Back on the Chain Gang. I just absolutely love that song. And I can't decide which one I like more, that or Brass in Pocket. But Chrissy Hind, she's another one that kind of goes off on tangents about her beliefs and shit. I don't give a fuck about all that. She's a great singer. You know, one of the best female singers of all time. So there you go. And we're going to transition from that into one of not only the greatest singers of all time, but I think one of the greatest performers, one of the greatest songwriters, one of the greatest musical icons. Fucking Prince. I mean, come on now. Purple Rain, baby. But anyway... We already looked at Purple Rain, but we have 1999. You gotta have this in your collection. It is essential. And then we have... That's it. Actually, I only have 1999, and I got my mom some stuff, so it that's over there. But the only one that's my copy is that. Uh, but we have an EP here. We have Puff Daddy featuring Jimmy Page with Come With Me, which has uh, three or five different versions, and then out there... Of course, from the 1998 Godzilla. I love this song. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, they ripped off Kashmir. Well, Jimmy Page played on it, and I'm sure he got a fat fucking check, so there you go. But I love that song. I really do. Don't care what anyone says. I loved it when the movie came out, and I still love it. Next up, transitioning from Prince into a band that needs no introduction, Queen. So we have their self-titled debut, which has actually my favorite Queen song, which is Keep Yourself Alive. To be Well, no, that's not my favorite. I'm sorry. You all know what my favorite is. But Keep Yourself Alive is definitely one of my favorites. And then we have Queen 2, Electric Boogaloo. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but another great album. And then we have A Night at the Opera. Guess what? Another great album. And then we have the sequel... A Day at the Races, because only Queen was smart enough to think of that. And then we have News of the World. Great cover on here. And then we have Jazz. And then we have The Game. Not Triple H, but... Uh, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Freddie Mercury was the real game. And then we have Hot Space. Another great cover. And then we have The Works. And then we have A Kind of Magic, which does actually have my favorite song, which is none other than Princes of the Universe. And this is basically the Highlander soundtrack, because they were... They were going to do a Highlander soundtrack, but because the movie didn't make any money, they never did it. Uh, so the stuff from a Queen was working on stuff anyway. So they put all the songs they did for Highlander on here and then a couple extra songs, I think. Um, 
Yeah, I think Pain is So Close to Pleasure was one of the ones that was not in the movie, but I think everything else was in the movie. So there you go. And then we have another classic live album, Queen Live Killers, because you got to have this in the collection. Then we have a couple Queen bootlegs. We have the BBC Session Experience. And then we have London Battle, and it does not say, well, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, this was uh, the Golders Green Hippodrome, September 13th, 1973 in London. And this is from the Rainbow Theater, also in London, March 31st, 1974. So, yeah, I'm an idiot because it's on there. And then the, I think that's the, this is, no, speaking, okay, anyway. Then we have the Cult Dimension which this was the lost BBC sessions, October 16th, 1974, and October 28th, 1977. So, all that. And then speaking of the Highlander soundtrack, I do have a bootleg picture disc of that soundtrack. So on here, you have uh, all of the stuff from the movie. You have some of the orchestral pieces. Um and like some dialogue and stuff which is cool but we never got an official one so we got bootlegs that's okay bootlegs are cool you should collect bootlegs guys anyway so that is all queen and now we have a little bit of queen's reich which is another great band i did see these guys earlier this year because they were on tour with judas priest honestly I could have cared less because if jeff tate's not there i don't care chris the garmo is not coming back but that's okay. So we have the self-titled EP. Which in the beginning they had the hair metal stuff and then like after the second album they got away from that. And then of course we have their masterpiece Operation Mind Crime. Which I'm surprised that I found this for $10 at a record store. And then we have Quiet Riot with Metal Health which was the first metal album to go number one unfortunately quiet riot didn't really recover from that so there you go uh, next up one of my all-time favorites it doesn't matter who was singing in the band but we have rainbow because why not so we have the self or well richie blackmore's rainbow which was the name of the first album <sighs> excuse me and then we have long live rock and roll which Rainbow Rising is the only one I don't have with Dio. And then we have Down to Earth, which of course had uh, Since You've Been Gone and All Night Long, which were probably their biggest hits, and that's with Graham Bonnet on vocals. Great singer. And then we have Difficult to Cure, great cover. With Joe Lynn Turner. And then we have uh, the... EP of Jealous Lover, which that was a non-album single that was put out, which actually ended up becoming a big hit for him. And then it has um, Weisheim, Can't Happen Here, and I Surrender from the uh, Difficult to Cure album. So, But Jealous Lover, again, was a non-album single. And then we have Straight Between the Eyes, another great cover. Stone Cold is on here. Uh, Death Alley Driver was a big song for them to Miss Mistreated was a big song. And since we only have a couple left, we'll just grab them like this. And then we have Bent Out of Shape. Still has Joan Lynn Turner on there. And then we've got some live stuff here. We've got Rainbow on stage, which had Dio on there. And then we have Rainbow, live in Munich, 1977. Of course, the original lineup on there, which I think this might come with a CD. No, I, th no, I think it's one of the other ones I have here. And then we have, yeah, this one does. Um, this one is Monsters of Rock, live at Donington, 1980, which includes the, a bonus CD of the, of the show, which is awesome so there you go and i what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move these ever so slightly over here we will cover these later 
so we can jump into here and I will move the camera just a little bit so we can get a better view on here so now we're gonna get into the third cube here uh, we're gonna do probably about another half hour I don't know if we'll get through all of it but we're gonna definitely get through most of it so we do have some more rainbow stuff here so we have this is more recent rainbow this is well this one's 1995 so this is before Rainbow called it quits for good. Uh, this is Black Masquerade, which was uh, Rock Palace in Germany, which is still on in 1995. And this is on green vinyl. And we'll do this because they're starting to slide off a little bit. And then this one is one of the more recent ones. This is live in Birmingham, Birmingham 2016. So this is when... Uh, Richie Blackmore got Rainbow back together a couple of few years ago and, and did some stuff. Um, I don't know if there were plans to do any new music, but I know they re-recorded a lot of the older stuff. So, yeah. And I am running out of water. <laughs> That's not good. And then, of course, uh, we go straight into you know one of the greatest punk bands of all time, Ramones. And this is their debut album. Uh, this is actually, since these are a different shelf, we'll do this. My bad. Um, this is a reissue, but classic album from start to finish. I did a review uh, of that for a paid request, which is cool. And then we have uh, Ramones Leave Home. This is on red vinyl because they did a bunch of the Ramon, Ramones albums in 2005 on red vinyl. I don't have all of them, but I would like to get all of them. And then we have Rocket to Russia, another red vinyl. Excuse me. And then the last red one that I have is End of the Century. And then we got Ramones, It's Alive 2, Record Store Day exclusive from 2019 um, on vinyl for the first time. Which I believe this was recorded in the on the 1977 UK tour. I almost said Australia, but it was not recorded in Australia. It was recorded in Marriott, England. And then we have uh, Triple J. This one's from Australia. I got him confused. Triple J live at the Wireless Capital Theater, Sydney, Australia, July 8, 1980. Previously unreleased live show. Record Store Day exclusive from last year. So, and the Ramones will put out a lot of stuff for Record Store Day. Um, you know, like a lot of the other bands that we've covered. Next up, we got Timepiece, the Rascals' greatest hits, because great music that is still being played all over uh, radio, and just you know, again, great band. And then we have. Raspberries, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, power pop music. Here you go. One of the originators of that. Of course, Go All The Way is still a huge hit in more recent years because of fucking Guardians of the Galaxy. But this has the original Scratch and Sniff sticker, and it still works. Let me see if it, uh, if I can get this one out without, they got this one in here really tight. Again, I got to switch all these out anyway, but I'm curious to see if the the sticker still works. Kind of. I mean, it kind of works, but <laughs> you know, I do have the uh, the original pressing with the stretch and sniff, which is cool. But, I mean, this is like 50 years old at this point, so, you know, it is what it is. There we go. See how much better it is when you put them in the right way? Yeah, 1972. So, yeah, 50 years ago. And then we have uh, Raspberry's Side 3, which is their third album. And then, of course, after the Raspberries broke up, Eric Carmen had a very successful solo career. 
Next up, one of my favorites of the hair metal years and a band that I wish would just get their fucking shit together so we can get something before everybody starts dying off. Rat. So we have the original EP, which has the original version of Back For More, which they re-recorded for the first album. And then we also have the red French pressing, which they threw in uh, You're In Trouble, because You're In Trouble was not on the original American pressing, I believe. It was not. So not only is it red vinyl, but it has a bonus track, which is cool. But yeah, this is the French pressing, but you guys know how I feel about the French. In case you didn't know, or in case you forgot, or in case you were wondering, fuck the French. Anyway, moving on. We have Out of the Cellar, great album, great cover. And then we have the follow-up, Invasion of Your Privacy, another classic, as far as I'm concerned. And then another great album, Dancing Undercover, another great cover as well. We follow that up with Reach for the Sky, which has a bunch of good stuff on here. Um, Way Cool Junior, well, my favorite rat song. Well, it might be uh, Nobody Rides for Free, which was from Point Break, but it might be. I'm not sure. Either that or Way Cool Junior. And then we have the original American pressing of Detonator. I know in the last collection update I showed the red bootleg pressing, but now I have that one. And then we have a bootleg of Infestation. There is a official release out there. I think it came out in Japan, but it's really expensive. Last time I looked, it was like 400 bucks, but this is on green vinyl. So a much cheaper alternative to get the album. And then we have uh, Rat and Roll 80, 8191 compilation, which only came out in Germany, unfortunately. Because of the constraints of vinyl, it does not have all the songs that were on the CD release. That's the only drawback of that. And then uh, we have Rat, The Early Years, um, which is on blue vinyl. And this is just a compilation. It has the original version of Tell the World and then three live tracks, which is cool. So it's like an EP. And then I got a bunch of Rat bootlegs here. Because why not? First up, we have The Year of the Rat, which this was recorded in New York City. Uh, radio performance, May 21st, 1984. And then um, this one, I cannot show the front because there's titties on the front, but there, and there's bush on there too. So we definitely can't show that. Uh, but they're nice titties. Just saying. Um, I'm not a fan of Bush, but that's just me. Anyway, this one's called Rat and Roll, and this was recorded also the same date as the other one. Um, let me see if it has all the songs. Um, actually, this one has an extra... This, I can show this cover. This has an extra song. Um, but yeah. But either way, you know, it's cool to have. And then... We have File Under Rat Smell the Rat. I like this because it comes in like a file folder. There's a Van Halen one that they did, uh, which is cool. And this was recorded in England, July 20th, 1984. I think they were opening for Ozzy at that point, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have Year of the Rat, but this one, this rat has two T's instead of one, like the previous one. And this was recorded New Year's Eve 1984 at the Long Beach Arena in California. And then we have Concrete Pirates 85. This was recorded at uh, the Long Beach Arena in 1985. But I don't think it's... they Are these the same show? Might be. Because the... Yeah, I think it's the same show. Because the track listing is the same. Oh, well. I suppose it doesn't matter. <laughs> and 
And then um, got a couple more here. Uh, cannot show the front cover to this one because, again, there's titties on the cover. But, again, they're nice titties. So there you go. But this one's called Renegade Angels. And this was recorded at the Hammersmith Odeon February 20th, 1986. I believe I have this on CD as well. And they def they were opening for Ozzy on this tour. So there you go. But I think they opened for Ozzy on a couple tours. I could be wrong. And then we have the uh, Dancing Undercover Tour, another one from Rock Brigade. This was recorded at the Monsters of Rock Um in Germany, August 30th, 1987. This is the radio broadcast. There is another bootleg out there that has this same show, but I believe the quality of this one, of the recording is better, uh, to be honest, and it is also on gold of vinyl. But we got another great Rock Brigade uh, release here, which again, love those guys. I'm, every time they put something out, I'm trying to pick it up because I love what they do. And then we have this really cool rat interview picture disc bootleg, but you know, still cool to have. And I found it for, you know, eight bucks at a at a record store. So now we transition from rat into another '80s metal band that kind of got shoved by the wayside, but they're still out there kicking ass, playing music, and they're British. Raven, I love Raven. Um, they are a great band. They were supposed to be the next big thing because them and Metallica were signed to the same label and it looked like for a minute that Raven was going to be the next big thing and of course that never happened. Metallica did. But like I said, they're still touring. They're still putting out music. Can't go wrong. So first up we have Wiped Out, which this is their second Golden Age studio album as it says. And it is on orange and blue smoke vinyl. This is a reissue which came out uh, this year, actually. And then we have Stay Hard. And then we have Crash Bang Wallop, which this is on purple vinyl. And uh, this is a EP, which is cool. And then we have The Pack Is Back. So yeah, they definitely tried to fit them in that hair metal mold. And I think it kind of hurt them more than helped them. And then we have another EP here. We have Mad. Because they're mad. <laughs> and then we have Nothing Exceeds Like Excess. Which is cool. Really cool cover on there. And then we have Raven Live at the Inferno. And then we have a compilation here, which is called The Devil's Carrion. So that's all the Raven stuff. Um, and then we have another uh, local Baltimore band, which I think they only ever put out one album, but we have The Ravens. Um, and of course... They did the song Raised on Radio from this album, which ended up in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And this is a gold stamp promo copy. But yeah, I believe the Ravens only ever did one album. So there you go. And my uncle used to hang out with these guys back in the day. So there you have it. Next up, one of my all-time favorites. This band's kind of getting a lot of shit more recently for god knows whatever stupid fucking reason but red hot chili peppers i've always been a huge fan of red hot chili peppers uh cannot complain about their music so first up uh these these reissues came out this year at walmart but we have the of course it's red but we have the blood sugar sex magic reissue because it's a lot cheaper than getting the fucking original pressing and then we have an original European press and a Californication, one of my favorite albums of all time. When this album came out, man, this shit blew up so big. Like, you youngins don't know, but this album blew up so big, and you could not go anywhere in that summer of 1999 without hearing at least two or three of the songs on here. And uh, a good friend of mine, again, he always comes on the streams. He's the one that got me the Nirvana Bleach record. Uh, his mom had that on CD, and we would just blast the ever-living fucking shit out of it. So there you go. So 
So then I also got, again, this came out earlier this year, the yellow and purple Walmart exclusive because why the fuck not? Um, a couple of years ago, they did a reissue, but it was a picture disc and I kind of held off on that. So I'm glad that one of the reissues got a color release because that's what I wanted. And then we have the follow-up to Californication. Uh, what it, by the way, yeah, which this is on purple vinyl. Another great album. Like I remember when this album came out too, because um, I remember the title track. I remember "Can't Stop" was a fucking huge hit. Um, there was a I was in elementary school at the time, and there was a kid that played "Can't Stop" on the drums for the talent show and years later I ran into him and we recognized each other and we started talking and I had brought that up and he goes how the fuck do you remember that I'm like it was significant dude and you killed it so there you go but uh, this was a big album too I remember 20 years ago this came out which is kind of hard to believe but and then we have uh, another Walmart exclusive we have Unlimited Love, which is their latest album. This is the sky blue Walmart pressing. They've done like 115 different colors, but uh, I actually really like this. I really enjoyed this album. I know they released another album. Uh, they did it for Record Store Day, so I'll have to pick that one up too, but uh, I, I quite like the new Chili Peppers, and they're, they're another band that's always out of there on the road. I'd love to see them at least once because it's the Red Hot Chili Peppers, so... Uh, I'll check my dates and see if they're playing. I'm, I think they've already announced summer dates. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at those. And then moving on, uh, we got one of the singers from The Cars and another Baltimore native, uh, Rick Ocasek. Loved Rick Ocasek. And we got a couple of his solo records here. We have uh, Beatitude, which I got both of these out in California, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. No just this one excuse me which is this side of paradise and it is a gold stamped promo copy but got that and i was talking with the lady because i got uh rick Ocasek, i got cheap trick i got pfm and was just talking about the different bands with the lady she was pretty cool that ran the store just talking about you know different bands and music because that's what you do when you go to a record store you know you be fucking normal and then we have Rick Ocasek's, um, or Rick Ocasek's, Jesus, Rick Astley's, uh, Wherever You Need Somebody, which of course has Never Gonna Give You Up. I found it at a Goodwill for a dollar. You gotta pick it up. I mean, come on. And then we have another bootleg here. This is uh, this was actually one of my parents' copies. Uh, but this is The Righteous Brothers, Just Once in My Life, which is similar to the, uh, the Four Tops where it's a translucent red, the four tops was orange, but it's a Japanese bootleg, but it's still cool. Next up, we got Rob Zombie with Hellbilly Deluxe. This is a repress from 2018. Great music. Again, I remember when this came out and was just really like intrigued by that cover as a child. I was like, oh, this looks cool. So yeah, and I love Rob Zombie's music, whether it's solo or with White Zombie. I just don't like his movies. It's weird, but oh well. Next up, another very underrated guitar player from the 70s, Robin Trower. This is Bridge of Size. Again, another fantastic guitar player that unfortunately will never get the credit that he deserves. And then we have, Jesus. Robin Trower live. It's amazing that, you know, all these records that I have are still fucking intact as many fucking times as the shit wants to fall. So there we go. Um, hold on. I think we have enough time. Because I'm going to go about 10 more minutes. I think we'll be able to knock out all the Rolling Stone stuff. Let's, we will. So next up, um, I know I, earlier I said I hated Roger Waters, but I do have Roger Waters doing The Wall live in Berlin. Um, this was a Record Store Day title from, I want to say 2020. It doesn't say when this reissue was done. But the reason that I have this is because, or this is like the super thing that they did. Like uh, Brian Adams was there. Uh, Tim Curry was there like they had all these different people come in and play the characters and stuff like that and 
the version of Comfortably Numb on here, I think, is the superior version because Van Morrison sings on it and then Snowy White plays the guitar solos. Snowy White uh, played in Thin Lizzy for a while. So, yeah, I, that's why I have it because I loved how they did this. Like It was like a huge stage play. Uh, you can find that there's a, a video out there, the pro shot. It was officially released. Um, and the fact that, you know, it's that super group thing and it's on clear vinyl. And it, I think this is the, the best version, the best recorded version of Comfortably Numb, in my opinion. Um, just the fucking solos on there, you know, makes you question, like, why the fuck don't I play guitar? <laughs> um, and that was the version that was used in The Departed. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to wrap this part up with the Rolling Stones, a band that does not need an introduction. Um, you all know who the Rolling Stones are, but I've always liked them. Of course, the, the time, you know, the ageless, timeless question of which band was better, the Stones or the Beatles? To me, the Stones. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday. So there you go. Anyway, so we have the... Uh, the stereo version, because they would do mono and stereo back in the day when stereo came out, but we have the original or the yeah, the original stereo pressing of England's newest hit makers, which this was their first American album because they had already released, I believe, two albums in England before they got an album here. And then we have Aftermath, which includes uh well this album is mostly blues covers, but I love their version of Not Fade Away. I love their version of I Just Want to Make Love to You, Walking the Dog, I'm a King Bee, Carol. Um, this one has Under My Thumb, which is one of my all-time favorite Rolling Stones songs. And then we have Beggar's Banquet. Symp of course, Sympathy for the Devil is on here. Street Fighting Man is a great song. Salt of the Earth. My favorite Rolling Stones album, Let It Bleed. This is the original pressing. And then I have the Record Store Day from 2019, I believe, or 2020. Um, and this is uh, hand-poured multicolor vinyl. They made such a big fucking deal about this when it came out because it was numbered... I don't know how many they fucking did, but this is number 130. And, you know, it was supposedly back in the day when it originally came out, someone made one copy of this particular color. So they did a reissue, but that is awesome. I love it. And they made a big deal because, oh, how could they do that? Bah, bah, bah. It's a limited number and ba 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 ba. And then you heard all these stories that the people, like the record stores that had them, didn't put them out for sale deliberately and then put them online for like 400 bucks, which is about what I paid for mine because I really fucking wanted it and I had the money. But they made such a big fucking deal about this release. And I, when I got this, I the video, like the collection update that I did, I went off on a fucking tangent about it and I was pissed off like everybody else was. And not for the reasons that other everybody else was. I was more pissed off because everyone made such a big fucking deal about it. If you don't want it, don't fucking buy it. But don't play goddamn games to where you want to fuck everybody over because you want to make money. So there's Uncle Fob's rant on that. Moving on, uh, the classic follow-up to that, Sticky Fingers. And it does have the original zipper, which still kind of works. Fuck it. But these are definitely... Well, it's not the exact follow-up, but these are my two favorite Rolling Stones albums. So there you go. And then we have Goat's Head Soup. Or not Goat's Head Soup. No, it is Goat's Head Soup. I'm an idiot. Goat's Head Soup. More classics. Another. This is probably my third favorite Stones album, Some Girls. Great cover. Great songs on there, too. And then we have Tattoo You. If you stop me up, if you stop me up, I'll never stop. How much time we got left? 38 minutes? Well, we're going to be done here in a few. And then we have Steel Wheels, which is underrated. 
uh, which has Mix the Motions. Mix the Motions is one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs of all time. And then we have some live stuff. We have Got Live If You Want It. This is the mono pressing. I fucked up and just grabbed it because I was like, oh, it's five bucks. Oh, it's in mono. I don't want it in mono. I want it in stereo. Oh, well. Doesn't matter, I suppose. And then we have Get Ya Yeah Yeahs Out, one of the all-time great live albums and one of my all-time favorite live albums. And then we have the clear reissue because for a while there the Rolling Stones were reissuing a bunch of their stuff on clear vinyl. I would like to get all of those. Then another classic live album. We got Love You Live. Oh god, that was my shoulder. And then we have uh, they have been reissuing a lot of their old stuff. This is the From the From the Vault is the series. And this is the Marquee Club Live in 1971, which includes the DVD of the show as well, because it was on Pro Shot Video. Um, March 26, 1971 at the Marquee Club. Every band played at the Marquee Club when they first started. So there you go. All the great British bands. And then we have a bunch of Rolling Stones compilations here. We have Big Hits, High Tides, and Green Grass. Then we have uh, Through the Past Darkly, Big Hits Volume 2, which has the original like stop sign cover, which is really cool. And then we have uh, Hot Rocks, 1964 through 1971. And then we have more Hot Rocks, Big Hits and Phased Cookies. I wonder what they mean by that. And then we have the uh, record store day from earlier this year of more hot rocks. This is the glow in the dark vinyl, which is very cool. And then they did one for the first volume, I think last year. I just don't have it. And then this is cool. This is a Dutch uh, pressing, but it's called the Stones Story. And I think they did a volume two of this, which I would like to pick up. But very cool to have. And I think I have... Yeah, a couple more. Yeah, just two more. Two more Rolling Stones albums, so that didn't take as long as I thought. Yeah, we're going to go about an hour here. But we have Sucking in the 70s, which is a compilation. I don't know how the fuck they got away with that title. And then we have Metamorphosis. This is the... Record Store Day 2020 reissue, which is on green vinyl. And this is the official re-release of the 1975 Rolling Stones Rarity Collection, which is very cool. So this is just stuff that uh, had not come out yet, or it was a single or whatever, but it's still very cool. So that is it uh, for this part. So in the next part, we actually only have one block to get through, and then we got to cover you know, the stuff out here and over there. So uh, we might be able to get it done in maybe like four more parts. So we'll we'll see what happens here. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed part 17 and we will catch you on the next one later.